Hey guys, what's up? So I get this question all the time. Um, am I too old to, to start programming? Uh, so I actually want to take a few moments to just kind of talk about a few things that I think are, are going on right now. Um, number one, uh, some of the, the channels out there, uh, th there's a lot of channels like mine, I think. It seems like that are just, they're, they're everywhere. I guess they, maybe they've always been there. I, I don't know. Um, but there are definitely a lot of uh, a lot of programming channels out there that um, um, I think, in some ways, can can give false hope as to like what you know what somebody's able to do and what what they're not able to do and things like that. Um, so I'll be perfectly honest and, and blunt with you guys in, in this video. Uh, I started programming when I was 28. A lot, everybody knows that if you've been watching this channel for a long time. I started really late. I'd already had kids. I had marriage. Uh, I had. Um, a house. I was actually in a in a financial crisis, um, which I haven't really delved too much into that. But um, th there was a lot of things going on in my life, and um, I made sacrifices. I, I learned uh, how to be a programmer. Um, but before that, like there was uh, there was little things that I would also do that I would end up finding success in, like um, getting my first white collar job. Uh, it took a lot of like you know basically bullshitting and. And going from being a plumber and a truck driver and a guy who installed appliances around the D.C. area to, to then being able to get my foot into, uh, into the door into, into a Fortune 500 company, um, granted on the business side. Now, it, you know, basically what I'm saying is that I feel like I, I'm a hardworking person, um, somebody that that strives to do the, the best that I can. Um, so, uh, you know, I say that and, and obviously I'm not perfect, like there, nobody's perfect. Um, but like the, you know, there's been sacrifices, obviously, with the time, with the children, with the wife and, uh, and and some of those things, um, you know, you'll never get back. And you have to kind of judge, you know, I guess in the end, whether or not it was worth it or not. But, um, you know, before I get into some sort of philosophical or go down some philosophical path, I'm just going to simply flat out say that I don't think that anybody is too old um, to pick up and start learning how to code. Now, if you're trying to like. If you want me to be able to say, hey, you're going to be able to take some boot camp and three months later you're going to get a job uh, making $80,000 a year as like a, you know, a mid-level developer somewhere, um, I, I think that it's, uh, it, it's, it's you know, next to impossible, at least in the United States. Now, that said, uh, there are all, all kinds of different paths that, that you can go down. So if you go to a coding boot camp, it gives you a much, much greater opportunity to, to get your foot in the door as like a bottom level junior developer, maybe in web development, mostly focusing on the like UI, like CSS, JavaScript. Um, and when I say JavaScript, not this client side, complicated ass front end stuff that we do these days, uh, but more along the lines of like, um, you know, what, what we used to do is some jQuery. A lot, a lot of business needs still have that, that basic requirement where, where web development, I think, was much, was much easier than what it is now. And because, I mean, what it is now is like, uh, hell, you can see what I'm, I'm monkeying around with right now, which is, you know, map dispatch to props and uh, map state to props. You're probably wondering what that is, but that's the React, React Redux project, which ends up, well, actually it's Redux, but then uh, React Redux uses the connect function here to end up uh, mapping this stuff together. But um, the, the the point is like front-end client-side development is much more complicated these days. Um, so, and that makes it even harder for self-taught developers to just be able to jump in um, do I think anybody can just literally learn in three months and do what, what I'm doing right now? Uh, I don't. I, I really don't. Uh, but that, that shouldn't be your mindset. Like you shouldn't be exactly, you know, trying to replicate somebody that has seven or ten years of experience. You have to keep things in perspective. You can't learn uh, to run before you can, you know, crawl and walk and things like that. So there is a certain progression. So if you start now and you, you really try hard, eventually, if you are truly passionate about this stuff, like I consider myself to be, like you can almost, you almost get to this point where you can't envision yourself as not being a programmer. So people might, you know, just kick you in the balls while you're down when you're trying to get into the industry and things like that. And if, if you're anywhere uh, like my upbringing, you're going to run into the same type of things. Um, how thick of skin you have. Um, and, and even in this YouTube business, I feel like it's giving me thick skin because uh, sometimes, you know, I get some of the nastiest shit that people say about me. Um, and I see some of the dumbest stuff on YouTube sometimes that, that people are following and, and getting success off of. And it just kind of, to me, sometimes I'm just like, man, if if my stuff is compared to their stuff, then like, you know, what, you know, what, what is the point? This whole thing's a waste of time. But 
it, it's really not like that. That's just kind of the negative part of me every once in a while that comes out. And it's just like, I can't believe people are having success doing what, you know, what they're doing. But, um, th- you know, that's just YouTube in general. Like how many people have literally made, you know, tons of money off like, uh, you know, weird cat videos. And, um, even my son has done some like really terrible videos, but, uh, so it all goes back to really how hard you want to work at this thing. Like how passionate are you at being a programmer? Programming requires solving complex problems day in and day out. So it's going to be something that if you do end up getting that day job where, um, you are actually getting paid to do this, it's like a dream come true. If you truly want to be a programmer, because you're getting paid to do what you would do in your spare time, most likely. And also you get better and you get paid to get better. You're basically getting paid to go to school almost, it seems like. Um, and that's one of the best parts, I think, of, of actually getting a full-time gig. Now, there are downsides, though. Like, You have to solve complex problems. You have to deal with a lot of different personalities, and you have crazy-ass deadlines. And you have uh, you get to a certain point where like people can't really solve your problems. You can bounce ideas off of other people, but that should be somewhat of like, I wouldn't say a rarity, but like if you have to rely upon somebody else to look at your code all the time to figure out what you, what it is that you need to do because you can't solve problems for yourself and stuff like that, there are people that that ha- that struggle at that. And like, I don't know if sometimes they just naturally get better at it or they just find a gig that just allows them to kind of be what they are. But there are certain gigs out there where it's like you have to solve these complex problems. And you don't have anybody else but yourself to turn to. And the amount of stress involved is ridiculous. I mean, so even if you're getting paid excess of $100,000, that is like a ridiculous amount of stress. And that's not for everybody. So I made a video about why it's great being a programmer. There's also some downsides, guys. Like there is downsides in the fact that I spent a ton of time learning how to program where I wasn't getting paid. Um, I've spent a ton of a ton of time on this YouTube channel where now it's starting to make a little bit of money, but like we're still talking about chump change when you talk about like a programmer's salary and the amount of effort that has gone into like you know to making this channel. Luckily, I enjoy it, but if I didn't enjoy it, then I mean it, it, I, it's certainly not worth it. Um, and and honestly, I feel like I have success because I have enjoyed this ride. But uh, there are like I said, there, there's it seems like. It seems like some of the stuff that people are talking about and doing, it's just like, what the fuck? Um, but, uh, all right, yeah, I'm not going to go too much down down that, uh, that down that path there. But, yeah, I think anybody can pick up programming. I once talked to a guy online that had, I think he was 80. Or I don't even remember his act. He was excess of 80 years old. He might have been 80 on the dot. Definitely 80. 80 sticks out of my mind. Um, but this dude was just picking up coding and... Um, and I mean, that's probably a, like an extreme case. It's not like he's going to try to be Zuckerberg or something like that. But, you know, he was trying to do that because he wanted to learn about what, you know, what coding was all about and things like that. Uh, I think he had, uh, you know, an, an educated background and um, just wanted to try to, you know, push his horizons. I, at one point, I wanted to be an author uh, and that was, you know, kind of short lived. But I don't know. It's good to dream. You know what I mean? Like you, you should be a dreamer. Some of the best innovators in the in in the world they dream to make the world a better place so another question you need to ask yourself is like if you come from a plumbing background or a hvac background or you're in teach you know education or something like that you don't necessarily have to strive to be a senior level programmer if you're a great marketer i mean look at look at steve jobs i mean he was a, a genius marketer but he wasn't very good at coding and he relied upon other people to get that stuff done for him just knowing a lot about coding, I think, you know, it opens up a lot of doors for you, whether it's like UX, uh, you know, user interface design, um, user experience, things like that. Um, even like, you know, basic web web design with HTML, CSS. I mean, there's plenty of people, um, you know, that make a, a good living doing that stuff. So, um, you know, you have to ask yourself, if you know, it, it, what is like, what exactly are you trying to accomplish? Now, you could also be a successful entrepreneur where you like you don't work for anybody but you you're managing um you know different people's accounts like one of the industries that i think is like the biggest piece of shit is uh is any sort of medical service provider within the united states like it is so terrible how many times like when you have to change insurance companies and you have to find new doctors and like you're calling around the doctor's offices trying to leave voicemails like they never answer the phone they're always at lunch when they do answer the phone, they're rude. Everything's got to be in mail or you got to stop by in person. Like they don't have this entire 
online setup. And I once talked to a company that was out of uh, Bethesda, Maryland, and they were trying to create like an, a new HMO and they had venture capital startup funding and stuff like that. But they were trying to create like a new, uh, basically a new HMO that they manage where doctors would end up, you know, getting into their network and their network was all about automating all that bullshit that, that currently is being done by, um, you know, re receptionists and, and people that just really don't seem to like doing their job. It seems like for the most part. Um, and I don't blame them. I wouldn't want to do it either, but um, anyway, there's always like, you know, whether it's, it's an HVAC or something like if you had HVAC experience, you might be a damn good salesman to be like, you know what, I'm going to be a business analyst because I know all about plumbing and stuff like that. I know how plumbers and plumbing companies can definitely, you know, use this technology in order to, um, you know, expand their business and things like that. You end up, you know, doing that for you know one or two clients and the next thing you know, word of mouth, you have a company going. Um, and, and you're an entrepreneur and, and you, you may be like, you know, a mediocre or, or lower level programmer. Um, and that's fine. You know what I mean? That might be the best that some people are striving uh, to be. So I can't make promises once again, but I think everybody needs to work hard. They need to be a dreamer. And if you dream for the like for the stars, like, you know, if you, you might end up in, you know, the edges of space or whatever. But you're still going to be damn, damn higher than you were when you started out on your endeavor. So. Um, the only thing I would definitely say is don't do it for the money. And and that's so cliche. Everybody says that money's good, dude. I am not going to be the one to lie. Like more money, the better, you know, money doesn't buy happiness, but it sure, it makes it a lot easier to, to attain that happiness because nothing sucks worse when you're like, how am I going to pay my mortgage or I'm losing my home? Uh, I have credit card debt out there, you know, out the ass. Like th that, that's never cool. And, um, and for all those rich people that are like, oh, money's not everything. Yeah. Live, live a day in that life, you know? Um, but anyway, all right, guys, that's all I got for tonight. You guys take care and thank you and please subscribe. Bye. Hey guys. So a lot of you asked me, how do I get my foot in the door to become a programmer? And I just want to take a moment to mention Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp is a 12-week intensive course that focuses on the technologies of the here and now for web development. Uh, some of the things that they're actually teaching in this 12-week course, it's geared to get you into the, the industry by focusing on things like jQuery, Node.js, React, Angular, how to use GitHub. So a lot of the things that you're going to need to do as a developer, as soon as you start, they're going to be teaching you in this in this coding boot camp. And the entire goal is to be able to get you into the industry within 12 weeks. So if you guys are interested in learning more information about Dev Mountain Coding Boot Camp, just check out the link in the description tab of this video. Thank you for watching and have a good day.